thank you for your introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Xiu Huang, and uh, I'm from the Parasol Lab, Texas A&M University. Uh, this is a joint work with my advisor, Dr. Jeff Huang. And in this talk, I will introduce how, how we use the static dependency analysis to improve the efficiency of uh, maximal causality reduction. As this work is based on maximal causality reduction, here we just uh, call it as MCR. So let's start with what MCR is. Briefly speaking, that MCR is a steadiness model checker. It is very similar to the dynamical partial weight reduction. And the purpose of this work is to verify the correctness of the concurrent programs. As we all know that the verification of concurrent programs is very challenging because of the huge interleaving space. So because we, we never know which, which interleaving will trigger the error. So MCR provides us with an efficient approach to exploring the state space of the concurrent programs so that we can verify if the program is bug free or not. Of course, this is under the given input. As stated in prior work that MCR firstly has no redundancy, and we, here we say re, no redundancy, we means that it will, it will not expose the same state twice. And the second, this work is sound and complete. And uh, also that comparing to dynamical partial redu order reduction and uh, iterative context bonding this work is more efficient in terms of the bug finding and uh, state space space exploration. But however, this work is, uh, also has some limitations. The first one is that this work is purely dynamic. So it cannot capture the dependency relation from the trace. It has to construct very complex, complex constraints. And the second one is it doesn't consider the uh, input, input non-determinism. So it, it just runs the program under the given input. But for the second limitation, it is, it is very challenging, and uh, maybe we think this can be a future work, but so in this work, we will focus on the first limitation. We will show how to use the static dependency analysis to, to reduce the size of the constraints. So here is the uh, workflow of MCR. So the whole system actually is, is under control of a dynamic scheduler. And uh, firstly, it runs the program under, under a given order under the control of the scheduler, and it will generate a trace. So here a trace is actually a sequence of events executed by, by the program. And then we can construct some constraints over the, over the trace to derive more possible interleavings of the, that the program can, can generate. So in order to construct the constraints, we, we introduce and what the variable for each event in the trace. For example, here, if we know that an event should happen before another, that we use, we use this constraint to, uh, to constrain their water. So if there is a solution to the constraints, then we can build a new interleaving for the solution. And here, an interleaving means that a sequence of the threat schedule, and by executing the program following the schedule, we can reach the, we can make the program to reach a new state. So the whole system works in a closed loop, and uh, it determines when all the interleavings are explored and no more new interleavings are generated. So here's the workflow of MCR. And so the key of MCR is how to con construct the constraints to derive all the possible interleavings. So in MCR, the constraints model consists of four parts. The first one is the must happens before constraints. For this constraint, it is to encode the order of the events by the single thread. For, for example here, that it, if events E1 and E2 are by the same thread, and in the program E1 occurs before E2, which means that, uh, that their, ordering, their ordering should be O1 less than O2. And then the second is for the, uh, for the log mutual exclusion. This constraints guarantee that there is no overlapping between two critical sections guarded by the same lock. And then the third one is to, is the validity constraints. It is to guarantee that 
every event in the new schedule is, is reachable. So since our work focus on the focus on the optimization of these constraints, we will, we will, I will give more details later. And the last one is to, is to make the schedule to generate a new state. It is implement, it is achieved by enforcing at least one rate to, to say a different value. So here let's, let's see a simple example to see how MCL works. So for this program, it contains two threads, and uh, x, y are shared variables, and all the others are local. So for this, for this concurrent program, it may contain uh, lots of different schedules, like uh, one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, four, three, five. So, right? The goal of MCR is to efficiently explore all the possible interleavings by the program. So, it starts with the trace. Suppose we execute the program uh, uh, along this, this schedule, one, two, three, four, five, and uh, we can get the, the program states R1 and R2 equals to zero, and in this program, the if predicate was, is evaluated to be true. So we, mod, we model the trace like this, and we use these abstract events here to represent the, the corresponding statement in the program. So let's consider the, the read at line three, for example, because uh, in the first, uh, first execution, it returns the value zero. And then next, we may expect the read to return a different value. For example, here, we, we want to either read from the right at line four. So which means that we expect uh, E3 to read from E4. So MCR construct the constraints like this. Because of E1, E2, E3 are, in the same, are executed by the same thread, so they should have a happens before relation. And we also infor, uh, enforce that E3 should happens before E4. So then by solving the constraints, we can generate a schedule like four, one, two, three, five. It is from the solution. But however, this schedule is infeasible. This is because that if we execute the program along this order, the if predicate here will be evaluated to be false, which means that the read at a, a, a 9.3 will now, will now be executed. So, MCR constructs additional constraints to, to make the feasibility, which is to say, to enforce all the reads that happen, the event we consider to return the same value. Like here, it enforces E1 and E2 to return the same value to make that E3 must be reachable in the new schedule. So by solving the constraints, we can generate the correct schedule. So as we can see from the previous example that the validity constraints guarantee the reachability of each event in the program, here's how MCR constructs the constraints. So it looks a, a bit complicated, but briefly speaking, this constraint can consists of two parts. First, it will enforce each read that happens, happens before the considered event to return the same value. To make this happen, it matches the read to the corresponding write to read from the exact value. And for all the other writes, so they should either happen before this write or after this read. So, this constraint is, is complicated because it is recursive. As we can see here, in order to match this read to this write, we also need to guarantee the validity of, of this write. So which means it is uh, recursive. So the validity constraints, of course, is important, but it has some limitations. As we see that for most events in the trace are uh, reads and writes, so the constraints become very, very complicated as the trace gets longer. So more specifically, the trace, uh, the number of the constraints will be, will be cubic in the size of the trace. And uh, the second limitation is that all, although there are lots of reads in the trace, just a few of them can influence the reachability of an event. So MCR constructs some unnecessary constraints. Take the previous program as an example, so that if we consider the reachability of the event R2 equals to X, because we have 
two reads that happened before this read. MCI enforces all these, all the, both of the two reads return the same value. But as a matter of fact, the first read doesn't influence the reachability at all. So in this work, we focus on how to use the static dependency analysis to reduce the size of the, of the validity constraints. So here's, uh, here's our approach. We use the similar framework as MCR does, but we integrated the static dependency analysis into it. So for example, here is, here's, the, uh, here's the model, here's an abstract model of a single thread and the program is executed along this path. And we consider R5 here. From the trace, we, from the, from the trace we can find that there are four reads, R1 to R4, that happened before R5. So on the MCR, it will enforce all these four reads to return the same value to guarantee the reachability. But however, in our approach, we take the source code and the trace into consideration. So by using these dependency analysis, we can easily identify that among the four reads that only R1 and R4 can influence the reachability of the read R5. So in our constraints, we don't need to consider the value of these two writes, two writes at all. As a result, we can reduce the size of the constraints. So here is the, uh, the key purpose of our work. And to capture the dependency of two events in, of, the, uh, of the program, we use the system dependency graph. So here's, here's a simple uh, program and its corresponding dependency graph. And we just give a brief review of what, what an SDG is. So in a dependency graph, uh, each node represents a statement or a predicate, and each edge represents a control dependency edge or a data dependency. So, but we need to be very careful when we find the dependency relation between two events, because we don't want to miss any dependency so that we generate a schedule which is infeasible. So here we analyze several cases. So in the first case, that, which is the most straightforward one, and uh, the event is, is, uh, is directly dependent on the, on the read evaluated by the if predicate. And uh, however, for the second case, we can, we can see that the evaluation of the if predicate may depend, may, depends on, may depend on a prior read, because for here, X is the global variable, so the real read that influences the reachability of the event R equals to Y actually is, is A equals to X. And the third case shows that, so the, the evaluation of the if predicate may depend on the return value of another procedure. So as we can see here that this event actually, it depends on the value returned by X. And the last case shows that the, a procedure call has a special dependency for its later event. Because inside that procedure, the program may exit abnormally for some reason, we don't know. So as we can see here that the event I equals to Y here actually control is control dependent on the if predicate in this function. So, for control dependency, we, we only analyze the four basic cases. And for all other cases are just a combination of the, uh, of the previous four, so we only uh, talk, talk, uh, analyze the four basic cases. And uh, here we, we formalize the rule of how to identify the dependency of the two nodes in the dependency graph. So given two nodes uh, in the system dependency graph, to show that one node is control dependent on another is equivalent to show that there is a path between the two, two nodes. And this path should end with the control dependency edge and it consists of the, of the edge listed here. So by using the rule, we present our main algorithm to, uh, for the constraints reduction. So we also, we first, like MCR, we compute the set of the events that happens, happened before a considered event. But what is different is that 
we run the dependency analysis among the set of the events. We find out all the reads that the, that the, the event we consider is control dependent on, and we only care about the values returned by such reads, so we can reduce the size of the constraints. By using the static dependency analysis, we do reduce the complexity of the constraints, but however, we met a, another problem when we implement this work. It is the redundancy problem re introduced by the static analysis. Let's look at this example. So suppose the program is executed along, along the schedule one, two, three. So we, we have R1 and R2 equals to one. And then, uh, similar to, to previous, uh, previous process, we expect what other values can be, can be returned by, by the read. So suppose we consider E3 here, and we expect the read to return the initial value zero. But however, because along this trace that we have E2 happen before E3, which means that MCR will enforce E2 to return the same value as that in the, in the old trace, which means that we need to enforce E2 to read, to, read, to read from E1. So let's look at the relation here. We can find that MCR constructs an implicit happens before relation between E1 and E3. This means that on the MCR that's, and along this trace, we can never make, uh, make the value returned by, by X to be zero. However, on our approach, because we find that E3 actually is not control dependent on E2, so we don't, we don't care about the values returned by E2, which means that it can, it can raise from any rise if possible. So that on our approach, that there is no heavens before relation between E1 and E3. So their order can be, can be any order. So which, make it, which makes it possible for R2 equals to zero, which actually this will be a redundant state in the, uh, in, the, in the future exploration. So to solve the redundancy problem, we, uh, we propose a trade-off solution. Actually, we just uh, sacrifice part of the optimization. And uh, here's what we do. We treat, the, we treat the events into two categories, which are the, the first is the, the, the target read, which are the reads we consider them to return a different value. And the rest are the, uh, are the other events. So we made a slight uh, very, 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 very variation of the previous algorithm that we, we also first computed the, the set of the events that happened before the considered event. But next to that, we, we consider, we, we analyze two cases. So if this event, we don't care, we only care about the reachability of this event instead of the values read by C, read by this event. So we run the static dependency analysis. But if, if it is not, it is, if it is a target read, we don't, we don't use the uh, dependency analysis. So uh, for the evaluation part that we implemented the dependency analysis using two existing framework, the Joanna and the Waller, and uh, to, show the to show the efficiency, efficiency of our approach, we made some comparisons with, with MCR in terms of uh, the number of the reads and the constraints reduced by the dependency analysis. And the second is that how, how we can, uh, how we reduce the solving time by, by reducing the constraints. And uh, all the benchmarks we use are from the prior work. And uh, here is the table. This table shows, uh, shows the benchmarks we, we evaluated and it is including two large Java applications, the, the WebLich and the Derby. So, and it also uh, reports the time and the memory we use to compute those dependency graphs. So in average, that we, it, took, it takes about 11 seconds and uh, 263 megabytes for, uh, for those tools to construct the uh, dependency graph. And to show the uh, efficiency, we compiled our two approaches with MCR 
The first one is the first one is that makes the full optimization of the constraints reduction, but the, as I said before, it has some redundant problems. And the second one is a is a very variation of the first approach. It has no redundancy, but it has, it sacrificed part of the uh, optimization. And the, the, the bar graph here shows the comparison results. And uh, for the ease of, of, of presentation, I just summarized the results here. So as we can see here, in average, our first, our, our true approach is reduce the number of the reads by 27% and 12% respectively, respectively. And for the number of the constraints, we, we reduce by 31% uh, and 15%. So, but what is interesting here is that, although that our first approach reduced more reads and the constraints, but as we can see here, the solving time reduced by the two approaches actually are very close. The reason for this is that our first approach explore redundant explorations it constructs it, it construct more constraints. So in conclusion, we, so the goal of our work is actually to make MCR more efficient, to improve it. As we can see here that uh, in average, we, we reduce the number of the reads and the constraints by 12% uh, to 27% and 15% uh, to, to 16% to 31% respectively. And for the solving time, in average, we reduce, the, we, we, we reduce it by 27%. And so, and we have, for the future work, that's maybe, if it's possible, we can take the input non-terminism input non into consideration to make the verification, to make the full ver verification. And the second is that we are ready to, we are, we are do some, we're prepared to release the source code of our tool so that we, we really hope that we can, we can push the software model tracking a little forward. So we wish that this will be helpful for other researchers. And uh, uh, that's it, thank you. It appears that you're making it when your really happens before in the data flow. Are you making an assumption that the system is sequentially consistent? Yes. Yes, yeah, it is under the sequential consistency of memory model. Thank you. Um, yes, of course that because of the limitations of all classical uh, static analysis, it may have some, uh, it introduced the sound list of, of, of original MCR, but lucky that our approach doesn't suffer from uh, such limitation. Because although that by static analysis, we met some undecided problems like the mega lattice problem or the path insensitive problem, because the reason that why our approach doesn't suffer from that is that is that because we focus on the on the trace, which is a concrete execution, and for that trace we can actually we can know the accurate information, the dependency information, or the or the or the locations by the pointers, so something like that. Then actually our work is uh, is sound. Thank you.